All right, before we get less started in the lesson, there's a couple things I want to make you aware of today, okay? Um, for the past couple years, my classes have participated in something called May Math Madness, okay? Um, it was just something fun to do. Uh, it was a photo challenge. Have you ever heard of photo challenges? You post a picture of some things every day of the month or something like that. That's how it started out, okay? Um, this year, May, we only go to school for the first 19 days, and then we're done with school, right? And if we want to have time to do this stuff at the end that I'll explain in a second, we can't even go for 19 days. Well, that's not any fun, okay? So I talked to one of my classes, and I said, this is the deal. This is what I like to do. Are you guys even interested in participating in something like that? Well, it was a very resounding yes, okay? And so then we talked about would we want to do it in April or March? Well, they like the alliteration of March Math Madness better than April Math Madness. Not so much alliteration in April. Right, March, March Math Madness has a lot of M's. Okay, so we went with March. So here's what's going to happen if you choose to participate on this. On Wednesday, which is the first of March, you're going to go outside of school, not at school. We all know math exists at school. My goal for this is to help you see math outside of school. And you're going to find a graph and you're going to take a picture of it. Please don't take a picture of a blank wall and say this is a graph of my dating life. Because number one, I don't want to know about that. And number two, that's sad. Okay? Even though while you're in high school, you don't really need dating life. It's not required to have a boyfriend or girlfriend while you're in school. But I don't need to be the one telling you that. Okay? That was just a little joke. Right? But let's say maybe some of your somebody in your house... I don't know if you've ever heard of these before. Uh, maybe somebody in your house reads a newspaper. Have you ever heard of a newspaper before? Okay. So maybe like you see them reading the newspaper and there's like a graph on the newspaper. So you could be like, hey, Uncle Frank, or hey, Dad, or hey, Mom, or whoever it is reading the newspaper. And you could say, can you hold that up so I can take a picture? And you can take a picture of them holding the newspaper that has a graph on it. And then you post that. And then you say, hashtag day one. Hashtag March Math Madness. This is a picture of my Uncle Frank reading what's commonly known as a newspaper, although people don't read those much anymore. Some people. Everybody get what I'm saying? And then on Tuesday, you find a cube. Maybe you're playing Monopoly with your family, and you're like, Ooh, look at this dice. It looks kind of like a cube. Excuse me. This die kind of looks like a cube. Although it's not an actual cube because it has rounded corners, and we all know that a cube doesn't have rounded corners, right? It's close. So you're going to say, this represents a cube in my head right now. So you take a picture of that, and you post it on your Instagram or your Twitter, or I'll tell you another way in just a second. And you say, hashtag day two, hashtag March Math Madness. This is a picture of a cube that I roll to go play Monopoly. Hashtag fun. Right? Or, I just killed at Monopoly, but don't say killed because that's not very nice. Okay? Everybody get the idea? <clears throat> so it's a photo challenge. These are the words for every particular day. You know every single word up here except for this one, and we're not there yet, but by the time it gets here, you'll know this one. Fair enough? So, have to be school appropriate. I know, that cuts some of you off. The pictures have to be school appropriate, okay? You got to post them to Instagram or Twitter. That's the most common way people do it. Or you can create a Google Drive folder, like a folder in Google Drive. You can share that with me, and you can put the picture in Google Drive every day. See what I'm saying? Okay? With the hash, well, we'll talk about that in a second. The picture must have a description in the title or the post, kind of like I was telling you, like this person's reading the newspaper, the graph was in the newspaper, blah, 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 right? Um, put the day number and March Math Madness. I know it says May. I forgot to change it. Sorry. Okay. Um, so like I was saying, hashtag day one, hashtag March Math Madness. Yes? Okay. Um, each of you will, uh, each post will be one entry into the challenge. So one per day per person. Students completing all 31 days will receive 10 extra entries. Entries to what? I'll tell you in a minute. Um, you must have taken the picture or be in the picture. So no, I don't want any images from the interweb. Okay? So I had a really great example to show you on my phone. All right? But right now my daughter and I are sharing a phone, mostly because 
uh, she tossed her phone to her gym bag and it bounced off her gym bag and hit the ground and now it doesn't come on. So since it's still under warranty, we mailed it in and they're fixing it and waiting for it back. But in the meantime, she has a 12-year-old girl, so it's really important that she checks Instagram every day. More like every minute of every day. No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just kidding. She does, she's not that bad. Okay? But um, she's apparently taken a lot of screenshots and stuff, and so I can't even find a lot of my pictures that I had close because there's just a lot of screenshots. So let's imagine I got on the plane in June to fly to Portland. My husband had a conference up there. I got to go with him. Okay, and I sat down in the plane and I was like, oh, Jerry, that's my husband. I said, Jerry, look at these seats. And he goes, yeah, they're great. And I was like, no, look, they have triangles on them. And he goes, that is so great. And I'm like, no, wait, I can take a picture of this and use it for May Math Madness. Because it used to be in May. And he's like, that's so great. And I'm like, I know you're not excited, but I'm excited, right? So first question is this. If I took the picture in June, can I use that picture on, am I missing Triangle Day? Oh, yeah. Can I use it on Triangle Day, which is this coming Friday? I took it, didn't I? I took it, or maybe I took, I had my husband take it, it was like this half of my face showing by the triangles. Can I use it? Yes. Okay? Yes, I can. I can use pictures that I've taken on other days as long as I've taken them or I'm in them, right? Maybe mom took them of you making a parabola with your hair or something like I don't know. I don't know what you guys do. I'm not trying to judge your life, okay? But I'm saying as long as you're in it or as long as you took it, I don't care really when you t when it was taken, you can still use it on that day. Fair enough? Yes? Okay, yes. Excellent. Okay, so uh, be honest, use common sense, and be creative. So what I mean by that is you don't know what this word is yet. We haven't gotten there yet, Okay. But if I say it, it sounds like this, logarithm. So a former student, I think, can I use names? It was a good idea, so can I use names? Yeah. Okay, Jason Carr, do you know her? She has a younger sister named Kelsey Carr who graduated last year. Okay, when Jason Carr was in my class, she did this picture. She took a picture of Kelsey sitting by the stump in their backyard, hitting the stump. So logarithm. Now, does that have anything to do with math? No. But she thought about the word and thought maybe a different meaning of the word and took a picture of that and used that. Was that creative? I thought so. So did I give her credit for it? Yeah, because I'm the one that has final say whether the picture counts or not. Okay? It was school appropriate, even though she was hitting something. It was just a, like a tree, a dead tree, in fact. Okay? So... Uh, and then when you, uh, make sure you tag me, CHS Kingston on, on Twitter, and then M underscore underscore Kingston on Instagram. Now, what I have figured out <clears throat> on Instagram, if your account is private, even if you tag me, I may not see it. Okay? And so if you're, I don't want you to change your account preferences just for this. No, no, no. Especially if mom and dad have said you have to keep your account private. I want to respect that 100%. Okay, so what has to happen is when you come into class, you just need to show me. Look, I posted this picture yesterday, so you can tell it was last night, and I just wanted you to see it. And I'll mark you off the list. That's easy. <coughs> What's not easy is when people try to fight with me about this. This is 100% voluntary. No one is required to participate this in this at all for any reason. It's just for fun. And they want to argue with me. Well, I did post it at 12.06 a.m. I know that was six minutes late. So my two questions for you this. Number one, why are you up so late? And number two, no, I'm not taking it. Okay? You got 24 hours which to post the picture about factoring, about a factor. Got it? It's got to be done in those 24 hours, not at 12.06 this morning, this day. Fair enough? And I'm not going to argue about it. I don't want to be rude to you about it. I don't want you to be rude to me about it because it's for fun. Because if people are rude about it, I'm not going to want to do it again. And it's pretty fun. Okay? So, <clears throat> if you participate every day, you get an entry every day that you participate. If you only participate one day, that's great. You get one entry. Okay? Because at the end of March, actually probably at the beginning of April, the very next week of school that we're at, I'm going to have a drawing. 
usually have a couple Hardin Simmons shirts in it. I'm going to try to get an ACU shirt, maybe a McMurray shirt, possibly a Mary Hardin Baylor shirt. Um, sometimes the Army people come and leave stuff like lanyards. And I think a couple years ago they left a real nice pen and pencil set. Um, a couple years ago somebody brought me, I think, three coupons from Sonic for a free ice cream. And I was like, free ice cream. I was so excited because it was free ice cream. Right? I didn't win it because I can't because I'm the teacher, but somebody got free ice cream. Okay? Not, uh, but it was still free ice cream. Okay? Maybe, maybe some of you guys work somewhere in town where you can say, hey, can I have a coupon for a free water burger? I don't know if you can do that or not, but that would be cool if we could have that. If you can't, that's fine. I'm not trying to encroach on their business or anything like that. Somebody said they could probably get me some Whataburger sunglasses. And I was like, those are cool. I would love, oh, I can't win them. Huh. And then I was sad again. But it would be cool for y'all, okay? For some of you who don't work at Whataburger, it would be cool to get Whataburger sunglasses maybe, okay? Do you get the idea? So last year, unfortunately last year, we actually had this after we came back from the band trip. So some of the things that I drew for were like South Padre shirts, well, we're not going on the band trip till after school's even all the way completely over. So there won't be anything like that this time. But I am trying to get some college t-shirts so that probably you have one to wear on May. May college t-shirt day. Stuff like that. Okay? So, again, this is 100% voluntary. Nobody's required to do it. You're not required to do it every day. You can do it as many days as you want and not as many days as you want. It's just for fun because one of my major goals in this class all year has been, can you see math outside my room? I know, you know that there's math every day in my room, but can you see it outside of my room? Okay? And this is, what? No, you cannot go to Ms. Patton's room. <laughs> the, the, the goal of this is outside of school. Fair enough. Are you going to go to a different school, Abigail? Maybe. Okay. Then maybe I'll take it. If you question whether I'm going to take it or not, show me. Okay, For real. So you know what I'm saying? If we're going through, like, all our old math papers, can we take a picture? No. You can't do that. No. Don't take pictures of your old math papers. Yes, sir. I, I'd be okay with that because it's not, like, it's not our school. Yeah. Okay. You okay with that? So you either have to take the picture or you have to be in the picture. Fair enough? Can you give us an example of how to do either at Hilltoe or discontinuity? Discontinuity is a hole. So dig a hole. Yeah. Now, I prefer them to be math-related, right? But I also give you permission to be creative. Like a, somebody hitting a tree, a tree stump, that's not math related at all, but creativity wise, that's logarithm, right? What's a pattern? Oh, okay. Power is like an exponent. Okay, good. But if you want to show me some power, if you want to, what's that called? Squat 1,005 pounds. Did you guys see that video the other day? That was pretty awesome. Some guy squatted 1,005 pounds. It was pretty amazing. Okay? High school, right? High school? Okay. So, questions on this before we we got to get going on our lesson. But do you have any questions on this? If you do, go back and watch this video that I'm making for you right now. Okay, this is hanging up at the front of the room, like right there. It's hanging up at the front of the room, right there. It's hanging over by my. Oh, I thought it was hanging by my lesson plans. I'll make sure one gets by my lesson plans. And it's also hanging up on the door. So if I'm not even in the room, you can still have access to it. I'll make sure it's on my blog, and I'll probably put a picture of it on the on my Instagram and Twitter. Okay? It's just something fun and different to do. That's all. Fair enough? We may take some time at the beginning of class, like when I, especially if I'm, when I'm checking your homework. If I get to you, I might say, oh, yeah, I have yours from yesterday. Have you submitted any other ones? Because like I said, if, wait, did I say this? If your account is private, I did, right? Okay. I don't want to miss it, right? And being human... I'm a human, right? Sometimes I might miss it. Sometimes I might forget to look. I don't want to forget. So you guys know you can keep me in check, yes? Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. Then let's check real quick. Before we go on to today's lesson, a couple more things. 
uh, on your worksheet from last night or this week, this past week, this worksheet, using tables and spending money? Yes? Let me make sure a couple things. Most of you have these tables filled in. I want to make sure you have these two filled in. So where does the A show up in the table? It always shows up right where X equals 0. So make sure you have X equals 0 right here. And the B value, where does it show up? Now, on a normal table, is this part of the table there? Is that ratio part? It's not there, right? So that's something you have to create if you're wondering if it's exponential. But that's where the B shows up. It is the ratio. It's also the base in the equation, isn't it? Okay? So at the top of the next page is a chart that says notes. Does everybody see that? Does anyone see that? Okay, one person. Excellent. <clears throat> Here we are. So what is A? A is the what? It's the initial amount. Okay, another way to think about that is the starting amount. Okay, initial is really the more, like, more math wordy. Okay, initial amount. And what did we just say? Where does it exist in the table? Where X equals zero. So you might want to have written right here, it's the initial amount, and it's where X equals zero. So like that. Okay? Initial amount, and then when X equals zero, which is we also know is called the what? The Y-intercept. Okay? What about B? B is the what? B is the ratio. It's what you multiply by to get to the next term in the table. Or if you're going up the table, it's what you divide by, right? Okay. When do the Y values increase? Close. We're going to say when B is greater than 1. I agree with you that all the numbers greater than 1 are positive. But are there any numbers that are positive that are not greater than 1? Yes, right? Isn't that what causes the Y values to decrease? If that number is between 0 and 1. That's still a positive value, isn't it? It's just less than 1. But we also have to make sure we're talking about greater than 0 and less than 1. Okay? Why did we say greater than 1 or less than 1? Why didn't we ever say greater than or equal or less than or equal? What happens when my base is 1? That's the questions over here on this side of the sheet, right? It's saying right here, what happens if the base is 1? It's boring, isn't it? Anything, 1 to any power is what? 1. It's always 1. In this particular case, we have a multiplier of 4 in front of it, so every single one of these values in the table is a 4. That gives me a really wonderful horizontal line. I don't really care about that when I'm studying exponential functions, do I? Why do we also use ne never use negative numbers either? Do you know? Yeah, it changes signs, doesn't it? Let me show you something. You know how fast these graphs work, right? How fast the calculators work? Let me see if I can make it. Well, it's not being nice to me today, but probably did something wrong. Okay, so if I have my graph right here and I say, <clears throat> excuse me, um, parentheses negative 2 raised to the x power, watch how fast it graphs. Uh, is that fast? No, and it's not done. It's still working on this. It's still thinking about it. Not done yet. You'll know when it's done. Tell me when it's done. Mm, now it's done, right? Is that exponential? I mean, it's a mess, right? It does have an exponential shape there and one there, but it's not really usable. And here's what's funny about the question on this worksheet. It says, why do you think we usually don't use these values for B? You know what the answer key says? Because they're weird and not useful. That's what the answer key says. Why don't we use them? Because they're weird and not useful. 
So if you don't have that right here, go ahead and fill that in. We don't use a 1 as a base and we don't use a negative number as a base because they're weird and not useful. It's not wrong, it's just weird. Kind of like some of your friends. Not specifically you, I just mean y'all in general. If you want me to be completely honest, like some of my friends. <clears throat> well, that's true. Whose definition of normal? That's my question. Okay. All right, is everybody okay with that? All right, then we need to talk about this real fast. Now, if you did the book work, you're familiar with this, right? Because the book work had to do with what? Transformations. What is the A cause in this problem? What kind of transformation does A cause? It's a, it's a multiplier, so it's a vertical compression or a stretch, right? What is the B cause? It's a multiplier, but it's inside the exponent, so it's a horizontal stretch or compression. That's exactly right. What is the H cause? Horizontal shift, right, left to right. And what about the K? vertical shift up or down, okay? Do you remember all that stuff? Because you did the assignment or because you recognize it's very similar to all the other parent functions we've done so far this year? Hopefully both, but it'll, I'll at least take the second one, right? Okay, so here's the trick question of the day. Well, let me ask a couple questions first and then I'll ask you the trick question, fair enough? What's the parent function of a linear function? Y equals x, right? y equals x, okay? What's the parent function of a quadratic? y equals x squared, okay? What about the parent function of a square root? y equals the square root of x, good. And what about a cube? y equals x cubed, right? What's the parent function of an exponential function? That's the trick question. So this is with all the transformations, right? What's the parent function of that? I appreciate your guessing. You're not right, but thank you for the guess. You know you're safe in here to guess, even if it's wrong. At least I hope you know that. Are you shushing yourself? Or, okay, just, just curious. Well, it's got to start out y equals, right? y equals. What makes something an exponential function? The exponent. Where's the exponent? I mean, what's in the exponent? The x, right? So let's put an x in the exponent. What's the base? A number. That's exactly right. Which number? Any number. How many parent functions are there of a quadratic? One. How many parent functions are there of a linear function? One. How many of a cube root? One. How many of an exponential? A lot. Because any base, in this particular one, it's two to the x, right? I can use that as my base, and that's the parent function because nothing is being added or subtracted or multiplied to this base or this exponent, right? But is this also a parent function? Is this also a parent function? Yes. That's what's different about exponential functions than most other functions. Okay? There is the parent function for quadratics. There's the parent function for cube roots. There is a parent function and a parent function and a parent function for exponential. Does that make sense? Good. Once you figure that out and you figure out that this number right here basically just gives it its shape, it doesn't cause any transformations, we're going to be a long way to where we need to go. A long way toward where we need to go. Okay? 
All right, are you ready for your lesson for today, finally? Yes. Okay, what's up? What's on my shoes? It's French fries. Yeah. When we first saw them, we couldn't figure out if they were French fries or a rose or spaghetti. But then when we got closer, it's French fries. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for today's lesson? Now. All right. So, there is a star. Some might call it a planet called WOHG64. Pretty soon, this star is going supernova, which means it's going to explode. Yeah. Okay. The inhabitants of this star, which I've personally talked to, I'm just teasing. The inhabitants of this star need to find another place to live if they want to survive. Yes. So they decide they're going to send out scouting parties. Okay. One of the scouting parties that they send out comes to our solar system. And I was sad because I read this. I don't agree with it, but I read it. And I was sad because it said they sent eight scouts to all the planets. And I was sad because they didn't send one to Pluto. But they did. They, did. they sent scouts to also the smaller, what do they call them? Smaller dwarf planets, Ceres and Pluto. I'm sorry, but Pluto will always be a planet to me. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm not an astronomy, astronomer. Astronomy? I'm also not an astronomy. Okay. It's a planet again? Yes. Okay. So, um, but they came to our solar system, right? The one that came to Earth, she was really nice, right? She's not one of those, let's take over the world kind of beings. She just wants to be able to share. She just doesn't want to die when her planet explodes. So she comes to the Earth, and she has to blend in somehow. Right? She happens to be um, a rectangle. And she sees this thing that looks a lot like her. She tries to talk to it at first, and it doesn't really answer. All it says is, garage sale. It doesn't answer her, but she thinks, you know, I can blend in by looking like this. And then there's another one that she sees that says, concert in the park on Saturday. And then she sees another one that says, one way. Right? So what is she going to be? A sign, right? So she's going to be a sign, and she's. It, it seems like a really nice planet, right? The other beings on the planet don't seem terribly mean, the people that she saw, you know. And, um, but this really strange thing happens to her. To the second, an hour after she landed, she split in half. Just right in half. So there were two of her, her and another one. Now, they weren't, they weren't the same size as when she started. They were similar, like the math definition of similar, right? But not the same size, okay? To the second, one hour later, she split in half again. And so did the other one that had already split in half from her. And then another hour passed, and to the second, guess what happened? Everybody split in half. God bless you. Every hour at, that she stayed on the earth, she split in half, as long as well as every other part had, that had already split in half. Okay? Everybody understand? So let's fill in this table right here. Let's fill in this table right here. So there was one hour since they, or excuse me, zero hours since they landed. So right when they landed, there were how many aliens? One. One hour after they landed, what happened? She split in half, right? So here's this alien. Now, I forgot to tell you what her dimensions were, by the way. Her dimensions were 18 by 24. Okay. But one hour after she landed, she split in half. So how many aliens are there? Two, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, her, her area to begin with was 432. And how did we figure that out? <coughs> how do we find area of a rectangle? Length times width. What's 18 times 24? 432, okay? 
So when she split in half, what happened? This this length used to be 24. What is it now? 12. So what is her area? Or what, yeah, what's her area now? 12 times 18. What is 12 times 18? 216, right? Yeah? So after two hours after she landed, how many aliens were there? Four. Because... Da, 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 right? And then three hours after they landed, how many? Every single one of these split in half. There, and there, and there, and there. So how many are there? Eight. Good. And then four hours? Sixteen. Are you starting to see a pattern? So what about five hours? Thirty-two. And six hours? Please make sure everyone participates, not just one person. Sixty-four. Thank you. Okay? Now, I'm going to leave the rest of this column up to you to fill in. Okay? That's going to be part of your homework tonight. But I want to fill in this column right here. Number of aliens in exponential form. Well, if this is the number of aliens, can we figure out a way to put those in exponential form? And what I mean by that is a base and a power. Any ideas? How did they change? Every hour, how did they change? They doubled, right? They doubled. So would that be our initial amount, or would that be our ratio? That would definitely be the ratio, right? And the ratio, another thing for us to call that, as far as our equation goes, is our what? Our base. That's exactly right, our B. Okay? So which one do you think you can use a 2 to get with an exponent to get any of these numbers? Yeah, 2 to the first power is 2, isn't it? What else can you do? 2 to the second power is 4. Uh huh. 2 to the fourth, 2 to the fifth, and 2 to the sixth. Right? So what did we miss? Yeah, one alien, right? Can I put that as 2 to some power in exponential form? I can, can't I? Think about it this way. Aren't they dividing by 2 every time to get this way? And what's happening to the exponents? So what should this be? 2 to the 0. Good. Now, if you need some reminders on that, take out your exponent foldable that we made first semester. We did talk about an area model at that time if you need to refresh on some of that. Okay? Any questions about this? Again, I'm leaving this column for you to do. I'll probably put a picture of that on Instagram later on tonight, but I'm leaving that column for you to do later. Okay? I'm going to try to get through this page, 1 through 5, together, and you guys are going to resp be responsible for the 6 through 11. Fair enough? Okay. So let's work on getting 1 through 5 together. After how many hours will the alien population be 512? Well, here's what I've got. The alien population would be the number of aliens, right? When is it going to be 512? How many different ways are there to, for us to figure that out? At least three that I can think off the, off the top of my head, right? So you figure out a way to know when it's 512 and tell me what you get. Calculator 34 is missing. And it's been missing for about two weeks now, and I'm getting very sad because someone took it and it's not returning it. You can probably get 50 for, for until it's returned so that you have one to use, okay? All right, what would you figure out? Nine? So I'm going to put nine, and we'll figure out what we need to do, okay? So first of all, can you tell me how you got nine? So you continued on with this pattern right here, multiplied this by 2 and kept track of what, what n um, number of hours since they landed. Okay, that's a perfect way to do it. Anybody do it a different way? Okay, that's fine. So after how many hours will the alien population be 512? Explain how you determined your answer. So he said 9. Do you want to do all that multiplication out? Or can we write this? 2 to the ninth equals 512. I know my 9 is a little big, but are you, you can get over that. Yes? 
because that also tells me, first of all, what I did, and it explains it, doesn't it? My work explains the answer. <gasps> Shocking. Right? <clears throat> yeah. How large will the alien population be after 12 hours? How do we figure that out? Oh, 2 to the 12th. Okay, what is 2 to the 12th? 4,096. Like that? Okay, 4,096 what? Aliens? Okay. What about 24 hours? 2 to the 24th? What is 2 to the 24th? Like that? Aliens. Oh my gosh, I'm getting really nervous. That's a lot of aliens. Oh, why would they be very tiny though? Oh, they half every time. Okay, mm, so that's something to think about, right? Okay. Is the alien population growing at a constant rate? Okay, so tell me why you think, because it says explain the answer. Why do you think it's growing at a constant rate? So a constant rate would mean what? I add the same number every time. Is this a constant rate? What do I add to get from 1 to 2? I added 2 to 1 to get to 2. I added 1. What do I add to 2 to get to 4? That's not constant. A constant rate would be a linear function, wouldn't it? Because what did we usually call that constant rate? Uh-huh, a slope, right? This is, so is it growing at a constant rate? To answer that first. No. And what's the reason? It's not linear. Good. It's not linear. On the graph grid, plot the number of aliens with respect to time. So they've got the number of aliens here with respect to time. Because remember, they always tell me y with respect to x. Remember that? OK, number of aliens with respect to time. So time is 1, and then, oh, sorry, time is 0. The number of aliens is 1. 0, 1. Time is 1, aliens is 2. Just a little higher. Time is 2, aliens is 4. So not quite half. Time is three, aliens is eight. Time is four, aliens is 16. So a little bit more than halfway between 10 and 20, right? <clears throat> Five is 32. Five hours is 32 aliens. Whoa. Six hours is 64 aliens. Whoa. Now look at that graph and tell me if it has a constant rate. No, now it's very clear, isn't it? It's not a line. It does not grow at a constant rate. Should the points on the graph be connected? We've talked about this before, right? It's been a while, but we've talked about it before. Should they be connected with the smooth curve? Think about the problem situation. The alien comes. There's one alien. What happens? For an hour, nothing happens. And then at one hour, what happens? It divides. So at any point between 0 and 1, are there any values other than one alien? No. Can I connect them? At any point between 5 and 6, is there more than 32 aliens? No. So I cannot connect them. No. If not, why should they remain unconnected? So you've got to figure out some way right there to say that the aliens only divide once an hour. In fact, that would be a great way to say it. <laughs> Sorry. Now, and then provide at least one reason to explain your answer. Just go into a little bit of de detail right there. Okay? So you have 6 through 11 to do before you get to class tomorrow. Are there any questions? All right. I hope you have a great day.